in June 1991, when I was at the Cleveland Clinic for my regular annual visits, I was told that Professor Ralph Clayman of Washington University, St. Louis, had performed a transperitoneal laparoscopic nephrectomy for the first time in the history of the world. I was told that he took more than 11 hours in performing the procedure and most of the time was wasted in identifying the structures. While discussing this topic with the residents of the Cleveland Clinic, I was told that attempts at retroperitoneoscopy in the past have been unsuccessful and therefore a transperitoneal approach was used. When they told me that it has not been possible in the past, I told them that according to the Vedant philosophy, nothing is impossible and that I am going to show them how it can be done retroperitoneoscopically when I come to the clinic next year. When I returned to Bombay Hospital in July 1991, the only thing in my mind was how to solve the puzzle of retroperitoneal laparoscopy. But we had some problems. Our hospital did not have operative laparoscopic instruments. We did not have a camera. We had no monitor and no pneumoinsufflator. On top of that, we had little experience of operative laparoscopy. We were lucky that our anesthesiologist Dr. Padmini Pai, who was also a gynecologist, helped us by her past experience of operative laparoscopy. I went into a meditative mode. For about two months, and having realized that our main problem was lack of space in the retroperitoneum, I mainly concentrated on this aspect. Then one day it occurred to me that if you can create space in the retroperitoneum by digital dissection, why not create a space by inflating a balloon? But I did not have the courage to do it till I saw a CT of a large asymptomatic retroperitoneal cyst towards the end of September 1991. This gave me a cryptic message. If I haven't harmed the patient, how your balloon can harm him? Then came a patient with a 4 cm left upper uretic stone asking to be removed retroperitoneoscopically. My resident at that time, Dr. Dinesh Agarwal, wanted to remove it by an open procedure. But when I told him that I'm going to remove it retroperitoneoscopically, he was a bit surprised and asked me if anybody has ever done it in the past. Well, I told him, I really don't know. But I have a plan and if we fail, the patient is not going to be harmed as we can extend the incision and remove the stone by the open procedure. I remember the day was 24th of September 1991 when history was made at the Bombay Hospital by performing 
a retroperitoneal laparoscopic uterolithotomy using the balloon technique. This was the original balloon used for creating a space in the retroperitoneum. The view of the retroperitoneum after the balloon dissection was ecstatic as the lower pole of the kidney and the ureter with the stone bulge were clearly visible. Two ports were used, one for the laparoscope and the other one for performing the procedure. Nitrous oxide was used for pneumoinsufflation. The endo knife was made on the spot by tying a number 11 blade to a 5 mm road. The stone was removed by using a sponge holding forceps directly through the working port. Ureter was not sutured but the patient stopped leaking urine after 7 to 10 days. The whole procedure was performed under direct vision with the assistant holding the laparoscope over my eye. When I met Professor Ralph Clayman at the 1992 Endo Urology meeting in Singapore, he told me that he had thought of everything but the balloon. At the 1992 Canadian Urology meeting, Professor Joseph Segura of Mayo Clinic walked to me and told me that I should get it patented, which I did not due to personal reasons. Some years later, at the Cleveland Clinic, when I showed my displeasure at Dr. Inder Gill using three balloons for doing one nephrectomy, he told me, you should be happy. Aren't you getting a royalty? Well, I told him, my biggest royalty is that you people have started using my technique.